Hi, I'm Henny, and I'll be talking about satellite data fusion. As an ecologist or a conservation scientist, you might be asking yourself, what is it and why should I care? So let's talk about that. Many ecologists and conservation scientists have been using satellite imagery to monitor ecosystems and threats to biodiversity, such as deforestation, for a long time. There are currently two types of Earth-observing satellites circling the Earth which provide us with such imagery those with multispectral sensors and those with radar sensors. Multispectral sensors capture light reflected by the Earth's surface, rather like a camera. They can also see infrared. Radar satellites are different. They emit their own radiation, in the microwave spectrum, which is scattered by the Earth's surface. Radar sensors then capture the returning radiation. Because they emit their own radiation, radar sensors are called active, Unsurprisingly, multispectral sensors are called passive because they do not emit their own radiation. Because they work in such different ways, multispectral and radar sensors give us information about different aspects of the Earth's surface. As humans, we see the world similar to multispectral sensors. They can distinguish different colors and different levels of brightness. This allows them, for instance, to tell healthy from unhealthy vegetation or forest from croplands. However, they only work when there is an external source of radiation, like the sun, and they cannot see through clouds. Radar sensors see the world very differently. They respond to volume and orientation of objects on the Earth's surface, and they cannot see colour. This makes them very useful for distinguishing between different structures, such as forest stands in different stages of regeneration, or small gaps in the canopy. They can also see through clouds, and since they emit their own radiation, they work day and night. So, multispectral and radar sensors give us complementary information about the Earth's surface. Often, combining their data can improve the accuracy with which we can map interesting aspects, such as forest regrowth, wetland distribution, or species distribution. To do this, multispectral and radar data is combined in a process called data fusion. There are different types of data fusion. Decision level fusion, object level fusion and image fusion. In decision level fusion, multispectral and radar data are used as separate variables to predict a parameter of interest. For instance, species presence. An example for this is using multispectral and radar imagery as separate layers in a land cover classification algorithm. In object level fusion, an algorithm uses both multispectral and radar imagery to cluster similar pixels into objects. These objects can then be labeled during later analysis. Finally, in image fusion, the pixel values of multispectral and satellite imagery are combined into completely new values, so the result is a separate, fused image. Satellite image fusion can help monitor biodiversity more accurately, and there are lots of ways to go about it. However, so far, as ecologists and conservation scientists, we have tended to use either one or the other. We are now at a point where both open source multispectral and radar data is easily available for the entire globe and our computers and software have become more powerful. In fact, many of the tools needed for different types of satellite data fusion are already available in open source software. This means that satellite data fusion is no longer only feasible for remote sensing specialists. Taking advantage of complementary satellite data could be a boon for biodiversity monitoring, especially at large scales. If you'd like to learn more or see some case studies, click the link in the description below and it'll take you to our review of satellite data fusion in ecology and conservation science. And if you want to try out satellite data fusion yourself, there's an overview of data and tools to get you started. I hope you'll find them useful. Thanks for listening and goodbye.